Hello, everyone. Tonight, our topic is, ooh, it's that topic called fasting. You know, our flesh likes to eat, so fasting is not our favorite subject, right? But it's necessary. So tonight, we're just going to talk about it. But before I start, I have a question. And you don't have to answer out loud, but I ask you, and I want you to think about it. Take a moment to think about it. What is your heart's desire? What are you desiring from God? I mean, you came to the meeting tonight and you you came here to hear a word from the Lord. So I know that you have a heart's desire. Matthew chapter 6 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we all have desires, heart's desires, and we just try to get it ourselves. But the way up with God is usually the way down. In other words, humbling yourself. Humbling. Humbling yourself. That means when somebody walks all over top of you, you don't retaliate. You don't try to get even. Instead, you get on your knees. The Bible says you pray for those who despitefully use you. That's God's way. His way is always down. Well, another thing is He wants us to fast and pray. In Joel chapter 1, it said, Sanctify or set apart a fast. Call an assembly. That means get a group of people together. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land and to the house of the Lord God and cry unto the Lord. You know, fasting is a cry to God for the supernatural. That's what it is. Fasting is a very important discipline for those who say that you're a follower of Christ. Disciple, the word discipline. Fasting is a discipline. There are over 70 references in the Bible to fasting, Old and New Testament. Leaders were moved upon to fast before the Lord. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus were led into uh, by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days. It's a lifestyle, folks. I'm telling you. To fast just simply means to abstain from physical nourishment for a period of time. It can be a single meal. It can be an entire day. Or it can be many days. But it simply means refraining from pleasant food for a period of time. When we fast, we deliberately turn our attention from physical things around us, this crazy world, our environment, and we turn to spiritual things. By refusing food, we are denying our carnal nature. Jesus said, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. It comes with denial. When we fast, we are denying ourselves. Jesus first declared that his disciples would fast and that what would happen when he ascended into heaven. Fasting would become a part of the disciples' lifestyle. It says, you know, the, the Pharisees came and said, Jesus, why aren't your disciples fasting? And he said, they will. The time will come when I'm gone and they will fast. In the Old Testament, fasting was like a mourning or grieving. And it says that in Nehemiah, that it came to pass when Nehemiah saw the destruction of Jerusalem, that he sat down and wept and mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. You know what he was doing? Listen, he was trying to find his calling. Like, God, what did you call me to do? It just doesn't happen for your supernatural calling to take place. It just doesn't happen. You have to set aside time to weep, 
to mourn, to fast, and to pray before the God of heaven. Do you know in the in the New Testament it says and when they ordained them elders in every church and had prayed and fasted and they commended them to the Lord who believed. They prayed and fasted. God, which direction do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? What have you called me to do? It came, the revelation comes by prayer and fasting. Do you know in the 1860s, Abraham Lincoln called a three-day fast when the country was in a civil war? So I ask you, how bad do you want your prayers answered? How bad? Do you want them bad enough to weep, to mourn, to fast, and to pray until the God of heaven grants your petition? You know, Ezra proclaimed a fast that the people might afflict themselves because they were surrounded by enemies. It says that he commanded a fast for the whole uh, group of people. So there are group fast. Fasting does not only humble the body, but the spirit. It afflicts our carnality. It puts, I call it this, I say it puts the monster back in the box because we all got a monster inside. We all have this carnal nature and we all have issues. There's nobody perfect but God. And this fasting helps us to see our own issues. Instead of saying, oh, this one did that and this one did that. Fasting helps us say, you know what? Let me see what I do. What did I do? What do I need to do? What does God want me to do? It gets our spirit man over our fleshly man. So that the will of God can be accomplished in our life. Fasting also helps us to get our priorities straight. Yep, we we got we don't always have our priorities straight. We got the me syndrome, me, 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 me. I want this, I want that. But God says, no, you need to get your priorities straight. There's some things I would like for you to do. Fasting also happens when... Um, also happens when it's a crisis in your life or you need direction for you or your family and many times we can fast as with each other as a group when someone has a special need you know Jonah God called Jonah to go and preach to the people in Nineveh and he and he told them that God's judgment was coming so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast from the great the Bible says from the greatest of them to the least of them that means from the youngest to the eldest they all said you know what God's going to destroy us if we don't fast and pray and have mercy from God and God listen Jonah 3:10 and God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented God himself made an about face see repentance isn't saying i'm sorry it's an action associated with i'm sorry god did you, didn't just say well i'm sorry that i said i was going to destroy Nineveh no god changed his mind he turned direction and did not so when you say i have repented but you have not changed then you've only said sorry and that does not cut it with the almighty it says they proclaimed the fast from the greatest it says and god repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them and he did it not you can say you heard it first here the day god repented if the almighty god repented and turned from what his plans are how much more should you and i be humble enough to repent when we have done wickedness or things not pleasing to god we need to not only say god i'm sorry but we've got to turn our back 
to that sin and say, I will not do it anymore. Repentance is a about face. It's going in the opposite direction, saying, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. He does not cut it. There's another time in 1 Samuel where they gathered a, a group of people in Mizpah and they drew water and they were thirsty, but they poured it out to the Lord and fasted and said, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the people. Ahab was a king that fasted and repented of his wickedness after hearing Elijah prophesy, if you don't change, doom is ahead. In 1 Kings, Ahab heard and he tore his clothes and fasted and lay in sackcloth. And it says he went softly. In other words, you know what? He was like, "Uh uh-oh, I better get myself straight. When a spirit-filled Christian has done something that they are not supposed to do, they made a mistake, they fell into sin, that person, it is appropriate that you fast and repent so that God can restore you. Fasting is a way that you can find the will of God for your life. Many times there's voices around us. One voice says, oh, I think you should do this. Another voice says, oh, I think you should do this. And then someone else has an opinion, and this one has an opinion, and then your mind wanders, and you're like, oh, I should do this, I should do that, maybe I should do this. But if you want specific guidance from the Almighty, then think about fasting. It will bring you closer to God and help you fine-tune your flesh to hear the will of God. Many of the leaders fasted and prayed to God and God would specifically tell them, this is where you go, this is who you go with, this is what you do. Barnabas and Saul went to a work where God had called them when it says, and when they had fasted and prayed and other people laid their hands on them, they were sent away in the perfect will of God. Another time that fasting helps us is when we have important decisions to make in our life. We we should seek God with prayer and fasting. We should ask God, God, help me with this decision. And fasting is a type of worship. All true worship involves sacrifice. Anybody can praise the Lord. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. The trees sway in praise to the Almighty God. But worship is a sacrifice. Worshiping God is when you bow to God's will and not your own will. That is worship. When it's God's will, that is worship. You cannot truly be a worshiper if you have not sacrificed to God. That means giving up what matters to you, including eating, as a discipline unto God. It's a form of worship. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. This is what Romans says, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. One of the strongest desires of our body is for food and nourishment. When we deny this desire for a period of time as a sacrifice unto the to the Lord, it's an act of genuine, true worship. You know, folks, we're in a spiritual battle. There's a war going on around us. We cannot see it, but it's there. You can't see gravity. You can't see the air, but it's there. There's a spiritual war going on. And it says we walk in the flesh, but we We walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of warfare are not carnal, 
but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. When something is a stronghold, it means it's begotten, they got it. But fasting breaks the bone, the yoke, the burden. You know, there was a disciple that encountered a man possessed with the devil, and they were unable to cast the spirit out of the man. And when they asked why they could not do that, you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, how be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. There are some things that will never get taken care of unless it's prayer and fasting. Now we know there's a personal fast that's a very private to God. And then there is group fast. We just talked about those. Most of our fasting will be done on a personal, private level. Nobody will know about it. But there are times when leaders will pr promote a and proclaim a period of fasting and prayer. In 1 Samuel, David fasted and went in and lay upon the, night, the earth all night. And 1 King, Ahab fasted. And there was a, a woman, hello ladies, there was a woman named Anna. And Anna was a prophetess and a widow, which departed not from the temple, but it says she served God with fastings and prayers day and night. And Saul of Tarsus, he did not eat, eat or drink. Fasting should be undertaken with the right spirit and the right behavior. Not like, oh, I fast and I give tithes and I do this. I get the eye out because fasting is getting rid of the eye and it's saying not I. That's what fasting's doing. It's putting this carnal man subjection. You must be sincere and obedient. Now, I just want to talk about the different types of fasting. There's a total fast where I did neither eat bread nor drink water, Deuteronomy 9. Ezra said in Ezra 10, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned. Esther said, go gather together all the Jews and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. And then in Acts 9, it says, and neither did eat or drink. And in Acts 27, it says, this is the 14th day that ye have tarried and continue fasting, having taken nothing. So there's different kinds of fast. But with the different types of fast, determining which one works for you, you must use your own judgment and your own reasoning. You can't just do what everybody says do. Somebody might say, well, I'm going on a seven-day fast. Somebody says, I'm going on a three-day. I'm going on a 21. But you, your body can't do that. You may have sugar issues. You may be on medication. You've got to use common sense with this, okay? Lengthy and extended fast should only be taken with extreme care and should be monitored. The body cannot exist without water very long. There were only three people in the Bible that actually did a 40-day fast. It was Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And those were supernatural events. They were not normal fasting. So don't attempt that. Uh, there is no record of any of the disciples or apostles fasting for 40 days. There are no records of that. So we must remember that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
And we must take good care of our bodies. So you don't say, well, glory be, I'm going to fast for 10 days and then uh, hurt your body and have a stroke. I want you, you've got to use reason and you've got to use common sense. Do not abuse or neglect your body. You can damage your body with fasting if it's not God's will. And it's not God's will for us to do that. A fast may be a partial fast, meaning that you can have a partial fast if you do have health issues or take medication. And that is like certain foods are avoided. So the Daniel fast, now I know there are so many Daniel fast online and people get into all these different exciting recipes and things, but basically I want to break it down. A Daniel fast was where Daniel said, I ate no pleasant bread, no food stuff or provision, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. In other words, during the three week fast or 21 day fast, um, Daniel ate, but he didn't eat any pleasantries. Like he ate just enough to sustain his body. There was no meat, there was no, you know, sweets, uh, the breads. It was just enough to sustain his body for the 21 days. So when fasting this meant, manner they drink water they don't eat meat they consume plain 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 foods and they do supply their needs following daniel's example i will tell you that daniel had a remarkable breakthrough there was a prince that you know that broke through because of that But when we do fast, it does need to be coupled with separating ourselves from other physical comforts, pleasures, and distractions. You can't just fast and then sit and watch TV for the whole 21 days or five days. You've got to, you've got to realize that you need to deal with your spirit and you need to get rid of those physical comforts and those pleasures and those distractions. And you need to find time alone with God. Jesus fasted for 40 days, Moses did, and Elijah did. And all three of them, it said Jesus went into the wilderness, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, and Elijah went and separated himself and went to Mount Horeb. They all got away from all everything and got in the presence of God. It was a supernatural fast. Fast can be one day, one night, one day and night, three days, seven days, 14 days, 21 days. And like I said, only three have done a 40 day fast and there's no record in the New Testament of anybody doing that. It was a supernatural experience with God. So there's no required length of fasting in the Bible. Each of us, should seek God for our own way. The Bible says we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We cannot do what others say or do. But some type of fast is a regular part of a spirit-filled life. I'm going to tell you and end with this part before we open it up for questions and answers. What are some of the results of fasting? After Moses fasted, he received the commandments from the Lord God himself. After Elijah fasted, he heard the word of the Lord. After the city of Nineveh fasted, deliverance came and they were spared from destruction. After Jesus fasted, he returned in the power of the Spirit. After Cornelius fasted, he received a message from God through an angel and through the Apostle Paul that brought, he was the first person to bring this gospel life to the heathens or the Gentile nations. And after the Apostles gave themselves to prayer and fasting and the Word, they turned their world upside down. 
down. The world, uh, the whole world heard the gospel because they prayed and fasted and sought God's will for their path. Fasting is a powerful spiritual tool that is ordained by God to help bring us into subjection to the spirit, to defeat the devil, to win victory over troubling situations in our life. And in fastings, we worship God, draw closer to him, and express our desire for his soon return. We're looking forward to seeing our Savior. So we should all fast and we should pray. And then we should rejoice and wait for that great day when the Lord calls us to the table and says, come in my good and faithful servant, enter ye into eternal life. So I end with that tonight on the message part, fasting.